Most people in the world today have to eat. It's a standard practice of the human body to wake up and be hungry. People who live in poverty, people who live in depleted resources, people whose jobs have been impacted by the pandemic or epidemic are struggling for food. It is truthful that the food banks of each state do have rights to go to different companies and request that they provide them with their food that's about to time out or is just timed out because we all know there's a little bit more shelf life beyond a particular package or a particular canned item that we all know that. And if they don't, they failed to learn it in health class or in culinary class or what we used to call home economics class, or they failed to learn about it from their families. Some people keep canned goods way beyond their date because they feel they're safe, and that was the way of old that they didn't have as many dates long ago, but they do now just to keep people safe from metal poisoning that can come about from a can decomposing into food. There is a reason that we rarely have water in a can that is not carbonated because water by itself can pick up a metallic taste. But today what we're really talking about is the recycling of food at grocery stores and restaurants. Some of them do a good job of this, others do not. When a person is impoverished and they're needing something to eat, eat for that moment of time, it is a highly offendable thing to the God's house most high that a human being who is really in poverty really cannot afford food today because they've lost their job or they've lost life in some way that cannot go into a grocery store that keeps food on hand that will throw it away by the end of the day or to a restaurant that keeps bulk food and simply say, could I have a meal today? Most people who live in the streets are smart enough, wise enough not to abuse that relationship. I know for myself, who've lived in struggle for some time since of cybercrime attacking my life, identity theft being taken on my life, and fraud being committed on my life, that I make a loyal relationship with the restaurant. When I have money, I take my paltry earnings to that restaurant as regularly as I can. Not only because my body likes and needs that particular type of food, but because it's food that I can afford and it's food that's usually quality prepared. We do have a stingent, a tendency of people who work in restaurants who think it's funny to play with a homeless person's or an impoverished person's food. I know that because sometimes restaurants try to be in a generous mood where they provide someone a lot more food than they need and that is actually very loving and kind when they say, I know you're paying for this, but I'm going to throw in some extra food for you if we're towards the end of the day because we all have a need for food and these pieces that we've put together in order to prepare for the shift, in order to prepare for our normal constituency, our normal customers, our normal consumers will not be used. And even so, we're a big enough restaurant to handle the person on occasion who comes in like you. We want you to be healthy, hearty, and wise in your mind and having wholesome quality proteins keeps the mind alive. Now that is a good company, but we also have people that abuse that, that don't get out and work according to people who observe them. I had a man come at me yesterday when I was seated after having woken up on, I hate to say it, my holiday, my own birthday, after which I had been in a store, purchased their food, ate their food, gone off, done some work, come back to get out of the rain, sat myself down and began to work on my computer. And a man I don't even know at all came up and started to insult me. He started to talk at me while I was in the middle of working. And I disengaged myself after completing my thought and said, how can I help you? He said, well, I was going to help you, but you're pretty rude, so I'm not going to do that. I'm like, okay, that works for me. Because you're accusing me of being rude when I've just disengaged from my work that pays for my living to give you attention, a total stranger. You see, we have plenty of people that want to mock someone who lives in the streets, but they don't know the person's life story, and they certainly are not representing God's glory, but that man and other people like that white man have come up and tried to piss all over me with Bible verses. And as a pagan priest who knows a lot about the Bible and knows a lot about the Quran and knows a lot about a lot of other works that have been written close at hand to the concept of spirituality and religion, which are protected rights underneath the United States Constitutional Amendments called the Bill of Rights, and particularly Article 1 
I get a little bit bemused. I get a little bit befuddled, not at all. I get a little bit insulted because they're sitting there in judgment over my life as if I somehow said, walk into my life and do whatever the fuck you like. I never said that. What I simply chose was a place that is a safe spot to sit outside of the rain and do some work for my life. Yet we have retail employees that are so busy bodies that they will continue to walk out of their shop, stare at someone, interfere with their life, call police on them while they discriminate heavenly heavily because there are other people who live in the streets or live close to the poverty line by choice of not going to get a job not trying to work in their industry or whatever it is that they do as odd jobs who literally sit all day long in front of somebody's restaurant or in somebody's front of somebody's business running a very microscopic business of panhandling it still, in fact, is a way they're taking in earnings and a living. They still are responsible underneath federal law for their own taxes, and yet they're given more credence than someone like me who runs a ministry who's got to be careful of what he's receiving funds for because I have to pay attention to the gift of funds. So when I ask someone, why would you want to do this for me, or what is it that you're trying to convince me, because possibly you've read my sign that sort of keeps people more in line with me, or possibly they didn't, they get offended. And I feel that's ridiculous because every human being has the right to know what they're getting paid for. And every human being has the right to decline if the position of that individual is that I'm going to financially abuse you with my wealth or my better station in life. Or I'm going to use this financial contribution to you and your ministry in order to abuse you with Bible verses that relate to me and don't relate to your life. You see, a true pastor, a true minister is a listener. And a good listener can hear immediately the house of the Lord saying, do not accept and do not receive from them. And I hear that quite clearly. That when a young white girl rolls up in a car with a young black man beside her, as in if they're a friendship or dateship I am or a courtship, I am immediately said, by the Lord, do not receive it. And then I learn a few minutes later why I shouldn't receive it. Because by that time, after I've departed that conversation, I'm able to observe the players that are trying to report on my life as if they have some rights to a stranger's life. And they were sitting there to try to embarrass, humiliate, or harm my life with more illegal, immoral, fraudulently placed records on my life. So Jesus Christ, or the Holy Ghost, or whatever you believe in the most, has the ability to guide you and advise you on what is and isn't right for your life. But there are many people who are vain and full of violence. There are many people that vandalize people's property and steal it in the night, even from people in, who are impoverished and homeless. What of absolute dereliction of God's house they're committing, and most of them will tout they're not a part of the religious rooms that they tout that they're participating in. I've had plenty of people say they want to do something for me because they're Christian. I say, oh, really? Where do you go to church? And they say, oh, well, I don't go to church. Right? Oh, okay, so you're a spiritualist. Or you believe in religion, but you don't believe in the concept of fellowship. That's okay. That's your right. But what I'm trying to establish is whether or not that organization has a benevolence fund possibly available to help a man to buy a few things so that he can go on, such as some new clothes, because some player in the night decided to taint 50 to to $100 of his new clothing by spraying them brown in the night without his consent, or ripping out pockets on a military uniform that wasn't their right to touch. You see, and if you're trying to help someone, you have to be willing to listen to what's going on in their life. And while you might have heard every fucking story on the planet based on your work and social work or mental health or those bastardized industries where people are broken themselves, I have to say, when you expect someone to be lying to you all day, you're full of shit. Because real stories are real. And mighty men do fall because of people who think they're in control of their lives.